morning. I'm Miss Smith. And I'm Miss Cox. And we are here to talk to you about the writing portion of the PSAT. Hey, Jason, are you ready for the writing section of the PSAT? No, I don't want to do that. That's just too much writing. That's hour long. Hi, Jason. As usual, you are wrong. Unlike the SAT, the PSAT requi requires no real writing. Your entire writing score is comprised of your answers to multiple choice questions. Only a Jedi grammar master could do well in the writing portion of the PSATs. Arbria, don't worry about it. You don't need the force to master this section of the test. This section of the PSAT is easiest as it only tests your ability to do three things. The first thing it wants to see that you're able to do is to identify and improve sentences. This is the first section of this part and it's called um, improving sentences. The second thing that it asks you to do in the second section is literally just identify where the error is. You don't have to be concerned with what type of error it is or anything like that. You just have to pick out where the error is in the sentence. And then the third portion of this test, in this section of the test, is the improving paragraph section where you improve paragraphs. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Okay, guys, do me a favor. Take out the PSAT packet that you were given by your teacher. Open your packet up as if it were a bird and just let the middle piece fall out. All of this stuff is test day stuff. Don't worry about it. The only thing I'm worried about right now is this actual test book. Open to page 25. And guys, don't lose this. You're going to be using it all day. All right, I'm on page 25, which is the writing portion of the PSAT. Guys, looking at this and looking at the directions, what do you notice? I hope the very first thing you notice is that you only have 30 minutes to do 39 questions. This is the only portion of the PSAT where you have more questions than you have minutes. So you need to think about that as you're working through the test. Also, if you look at this practice test, the writing section is the very last section. You need to hold on to some energy for the end of the test, especially if you know that you're not, this isn't your favorite thing to do. All right, let's look at the questions. Question number one is exactly what I told you it would be. This is the correcting sentences issue. Now, if you look at this question and you look at all the other ones, all I'm telling you is based on the fact that this part is underlined, that's where the error is. So you don't have to worry about any part of this, okay? You're looking for the error and how to correct just what's underlined. All right, um, here's the other thing you have to understand about this section. As you read it, answer option A is always going to be exactly what the model looks like. So if you think there's an error in here, then A can't be the correct answer. Let's look at number one together. The plans for the old building was located by Miss Morimoto when she searched through municipal records. Hmm. I hope your ears heard that that didn't sound right. My ears, and I trust my ears, told me that that doesn't sound right. So I know A can't be the correct answer. Oh, wait. Look what I just did. Guys, if you look at how I eliminated that question, I didn't just cross out the letter. I crossed out the entire line. There's research out there that says if you just cross out the letter option, your brain and your eyes still consider A an answer option. So you got to cross out the whole thing so you can't see it anymore. Okay? Um, now, the next thing we do is just basically read through. If you look at B, C, D, and E, B and C both start w with locating or located, and D and E start with Miss Morimoto. So we've reworked the sentence. Locating the plans for the old building, it was Mrs. Morimoto when, sh when she searched through municipal records. Does that sound right to you guys? Doesn't sound right to me, so once again, I eliminate it. And you literally work your way through the rest. Located by Mrs. Morimoto, who found the plans for the old building, she searched through municipal records. Hmm, doesn't quite work for me. Do you see what I did? The sentence is just worried about the underlined portion, so I have to replace it with the rest. Doesn't work for me. Miss Morimoto located the plans for the old building when she searched through municipal records. Okay, I think that could be a possibility. And E, Miss Morimoto, Miss Morimoto, who located the plans for the old building when she searched through municipal records. That doesn't work for me either. My ear says that stinks. So for me, the answer is D, and I can already tell you that that's correct. Let's look at number two. Animals that live underground, like some salamanders, having been sheltered from surface storms and extremes of temperature. All right, I'm only looking at underlining and changing this little piece. Having been
in. Does that sound right to you? Doesn't sound right to me, so I can already, again, eliminate A because it's exactly what's in the sentence. Guys, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I want you to try to work your way through the less answers. identify the answer is C. This is an error in subject and verb agreement because I have animals and then I have my verb here. My animals are because it's multiple things. Listen guys, one of the best resources you have for this section of the test is your own brain. If you're reading the sentences out loud, think about cupping your ears so your brain has to do something else and so you can hear the error. Okay? Let's look at one more of these because I want you to see what it does. If you look at number four, you'll happen to notice that this is the only question in the entire section where the entire sentence is underlined. Guys, if you look at that, that's a whole paragraph worth of reading. If I were you, I'd skip those kind. Don't worry about answering those ones where the entire sentence is underlined. Get through the rest of this section, and if you have some extra time at the end, then go back and do those, okay? All right. Second part of the writing section of the PSAT is that identifying sentence errors. All you're doing is looking for where the error is. You don't need to know what it is, you just need to know it's there. Just like in the previous section, there's essentially a no error option. If you look at this, answer E is always no error. So if you think the sentence sounds best the way it is, then your answer is no error. Let's try 21. There was much speculation among the security staff concerned about how someone had broken into the secured building without setting off any alarms. And all you have to do is figure out where the error is. Now, if you heard me read this out loud, it's very clear that the error is B because I flubbed up reading it. One of the things you can't do during the PSAT is talk. But one of the things you can do is move your mouth like you were reading the sentence out loud and your brain will flub the error, okay? If you guys just trust yourself, your brain will find the error. Now, these are the most num this is the highest number of questions on this whole portion of the test. However, they are statistically the most difficult. So don't fly through them. You gotta really pay attention. Guys, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds. Try number 22 on your own. Understanding the difference between criticism and insult enhances one's ability to engage in constructive argument. See how fluently and easily I read that sentence? I hope that that means you also got the answer as E, no error. That sentence is completely okay the way it is. Last part of this test, and probably this comes at the very end, and most of you are going to be like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to show you how. Is this identifying paragraph errors on page 29? This? is a ton of reading. This is the writing section, not the reading section. Why am I doing all this reading? Well, guess what? You're not. If you look at the questions first, you'll see that you probably don't need to do all of that reading. Let's look at question number 35. In context, which of the following is the best way to revise and combine sentences one, two, and three? But then look what it says. It says reproduce below. So all I need is right here. I don't even need all of that stuff in that longer paragraph. So what is the best way to revise this and combine them? Six chimpanzees were trained by researchers in the 1940s. The chimpanzees were trained to operate a vending machine. They inserted a plastic poker chip into its slot and a grape was dispensed every time. This is the area where you're mostly looking for inserting some kind of comma or things of that nature. What I recommend you do is you edit this sentence and combine it the way you would first. So I would say six champies were trained to operate a vending machine. They inserted a plastic poker chip, poker chip into its slot and a grape was dispensed every time. Well, let's, say, let's see if any of those sentences look like mine. 
Six chimpanzees were trained. Chimpanzees were trained by researchers in the 40s. They operated a vending machine and dispensed a grape every time a plastic poker chip was inserted into its slot. Okay. Trained by researchers in the 1940s, a vending machine operated by six chimpanzees, ch six chimpanzees dispensed a grape every time a plastic poker chip was inserted into a slot. Well, if you read that the way it's written, it sounds like the researchers trained the vending machine, not my chimpanzees. So that guy's got to go. In the 1940s, researchers trained six chimpanzees to operate a vending machine that would dispense a grape every time a plastic poacher chip was inserted into its slot. Wow, look at that. All one single sentence without comma splices? Mmm, not a bad choice. Operating a vending machine in the 1940s, six chimpanzees were trained by researchers and were, dispo and were dispensed a grape every time a plastic poker chip was inserted. Well... It sounds like they were already operating the vending machine before the researchers got involved. So get rid of that one. Researchers trained six chimpanzees in the, chimpanzees in the 1940s. When they operated a vending machine, they inserted a plastic poker chip into its slot and had a grape dispensed every time. Look at this. Guys, that's just bad grammar. So my answer is clearly C. Okay? Let's look at 36. In context, which of the following is the best revision of the underlying portion of sentence 5? Look at that, reproduce below. I have yet to go back to all of that reading. As soon as the chimps learned to use the vending machine, the poker chips acquired great value, becoming objects not only of interest, but of contention. This is what I need to fix, is this as. That's it, so let's look. Not so as the chimps, while well, I'm not looking for a negative. However, as soon as the chips learned, okay, that sounds like it could work. Although, as soon as the chimps learned, uh, I'm not looking for comparison. In short, as the chimps learned to use the vending machine, that could work. Therefore, as soon as the chimps learned, well, I already know, the answer has to be B, process of elimination. Be careful. Look at question number 38. This question is asking you to read a part of the passage to answer the question. Save these types for last. Which of the following, if placed immediately before sentence 10, would best introduce the third paragraph, sentences 10 through 12? So I would have to go back, look for sentence 10, read sentence 9, and all of this. Y'all, you have 30 minutes to do 39 questions. This is another type of one of those ones that if I were you, I would skip. Okay? If you saw, Ms. Barrett said that there are absolutely no pieces of narrative writing. She's correct. Your entire writing score of the PSAT is built off of just these multiple choice questions. You have to know everything about grammar to do well on the writing portion of the PSATs. Jeff, this is right after Deontay. What's up, Deontay? This is Miss Cox. Just to clarify, you really only have to be concerned with four grammatical concepts. One, being consistent. Basically, if you start your sentence one way, keep it going that way. Number two, expressing ideas logically. Number three, being clear and precise. And four, too wordy. Follow the rules of conversation. The PSAT is a practice SAT, so it doesn't matter. Come on now, Ala, that's not true either. The PSAT serves as a, a scholarship qualifying test. Based on your score, you could get scholarships for colleges. You also get information about different colleges that might interest you, and it is a great practice for the SAT.